So one of the biggest issues last year has been the slowdown in global economic growth. This chart shows business confidence or manufacturing confidence, and we use that because it's a real-time indicator. It generally leads economic growth. So as you can see, about this time last year, growth started to slow in Europe, and then the US followed a little bit after that. Now, there was three main reasons for that. Uh, first was the interest rate rises in the US. So there's been nine in total and four in the last year. So that had the delayed impact of slowing the economy. Second was the deleveraging campaign by the Chinese government. So the Chinese economy has increased debt quite sharply over the last few years, and the Chinese wanted to reduce that reliance on the debt, so they went through a deleveraging campaign. Third was just the uncertainty. So Brexit, the trade wars, um, falling house prices meant that businesses were less confident to get out there and invest, and that acted as another constraint on growth. The good news is um, that this, these charts show a slowdown in growth and, and not a recession. And also some of those headwinds are fading. So the US Federal Reserve, as Wayne has indicated, uh, is unlikely to increase rates further this year. Um, the Chinese have pulled back on their deleveraging campaign. And things we're starting to see some green shoots in China. We had some good data over the weekend. Uh, we also had one of our team members up there in China in the last couple of weeks and, and seeing on the ground that things are starting to recover. And we're also starting to see some positive signs in Europe when, when after a long periods of fiscal austerity, their governments are getting out there trying to stimulate growth and spend as well. So why do we care so much about economic growth? Because economic growth leads to company earnings growth. This chart shows the earnings for 2000, for the World Index, the earnings growth for 2017, 18 and 19 through time. So after good years in 2017 and 2018, which was helped by the, by the tax cuts in the US, of around about 15%. In 2019, the, uh, the Navy line, you can see that earnings growth started to slow quite sharply. And there's now forecasting earnings growth of just around 2%. So other things being equal, if we don't get an increase in valuation, that means we're likely to get relatively low returns from global share markets. The good news, however, though, is share valuations are currently being supported by low interest rates. So the blue line shows the, the yield on the five-year New Zealand government bond yield, uh, bond, and it's just 1.5%, and that has decreased quite sharply um, this year and over the last few years. So lower interest rates encourages investors to look for other opportunities, other ways to earn an income, and typically leads to rises in share markets, and we have seen that this year. The orange line shows the dividend yield on the New Zealand share market, and it's still relatively healthy at around about 4%. So you are getting a premium over what we're getting in government bond yields. So what do we expect share markets to do over the next year? Well, we, well, we think generally that they're going to remain volatile. So this chart shows the return over the last two years. And you can see that in 2017, we had a nice, gradually rising share market return. And in 2018, we had this volatility. Lots of ups and downs, and depending on where you invested, really depended on how well you did. And we think that environment is going to continue, just given um, that sort of the competing forces of falling growth and, uh, and, falling, and falling interest rates. So what's our aim? Well, the aim in the active growth is to take away out some of that volatility. We aim to sell the markets when uh, people are getting too optimistic, and then buy back in when markets are getting too pessimistic. So we did that successfully in February of last year um, when share markets were performing quite strongly. And you can see the, the peak on the chart. And then we added back again um, when markets fell in, uh, in February and March. We also reduced our risk in September and October last year, again, as markets we thought got a bit ahead of themselves. However, this time we didn't add back as much shares um, as we did in February. The reason being is that there were still these uncertainties, and there still are these uncertainties out there. So just a reminder on the Active Growth Fund, it's the approach of the fund, and then I'll give you an update on our current strategy. The objective of the fund is to return 10% over time and protect capital. And importantly, we think it's important that our investors measure our performance over a five-year period, because in the short term, there will be ups and downs in the market. So as, as I've outlined, I think this 10% return will be a challenge in the short term, um, but we're up for our challenge and it is our job to try and enhance the returns over and above what the share markets and the fixed income markets are going to deliver us. 
So how do we get to 10%? Well, we have to take risk on your behalf and we have to invest in shares. So typically the fund will have around about 80% in shares, um, but we have to manage that risk. We have to make sure that we're getting rewarded for that risk. And there's two, way, two main ways that we manage our risk and get extra return for our investors. First is active strategy, which I talked a little bit about. Um, that's moving the portfolio to where we're getting best rewarded for our risk. And if we're not getting rewarded for risk, taking risk off the table. And secondly is company selection. And that's the key part of what the investment team does. It's getting out there and finding those companies that we think are either undervalued or are likely to grow their earnings faster than what other people think that they will. And that's where the fund leverages off the, the large investment team at Milford. Um, the Active Growth Fund invests with some of the other portfolios and portfolio managers at Milford and takes the best ideas from the analysts that are getting out there and visiting the companies. So what's our current strategy? Um, currently we are cautious. This table shows the, the mix of assets um, this time last year, our current mix and relative to our, our sort of long-term average or our neutral expectations. So currently we've got around about 68% in shares. This time last year we had around about 75% in shares. The big change really has been the reduction in the exposure to the Australian share market. We're finding it hard to find those attractive opportunities, those attractive companies to invest in, particularly given the headwinds of falling house prices, which we thought, think will have an impact on their economy. The other big change has been quite a large increase in the allocation to fixed income. Um, there's a couple of spaces in fixed income. We're finding some of the high yield fixed income investments quite attractive for the risk, for the, um, for the risk that you're taking. We're getting yields of sort of five, six, seven percent, depending on the security, which we think is going to be a good result in a low risk world. And we've also um, increased our exposure to some of the higher rated, more liquid securities to make our money earn, work harder and get a premium over cash.